Yeah, so there was the old litmus test last night. Uh, things weren't so lit for you, beloved Chiefs. They uh, did miss some drop passes, touchdown passes. Yeah. Apparently, Scantling didn't get the memo and thought this was a practice game. This is a Super Bowl rematch. Mm -hmm. But yep. you went to a, a Eagles bar with your pops to watch no, the Chiefs chi game? A Chiefs a bar Chiefs in Philly. Uh, right. so, I, so, so, I, so here's the deal. I'm going to... I'm going to kind of speed run my thoughts on the game and then spend a lot of time on my evening because I actually think that could be more more important, if you will. Here's I'm in a rough spot when it comes to the talking about the game, and I'm not I don't want to I'm not going to do the podcast a disservice, but I have an entire television staff including co-hosts, all plotting my demise today. We have two of our lead producers, Dusty, who's our number yes. one viewer of this podcast, is a diehard Eagles fan. Cab is a big Eagles fan. Cab, who never texts me, just texts me an eagle emoji shortly after the final whistle last night. Wilds and Brew just regularly just team up against me and Mangini's there today. So, the problem that I have is this. If I lay out my full case as to why the Chiefs are just going to be fine, I am giving them four extra hours to prepare yeah. to argue with me on television. Meanwhile, they, Wilds and Brew, will both be sitting in their offices with the doors closed, having all the producers working for them. It's like one on 17 on First Things First today. And so I, I, I don't want to reveal my full game plan, but here is what I will say, okay? I understand that everyone today is going to have the same opinion. Uh, catch the football. You're going to watch sports TV all over, both networks, all the shows, and everyone's going to have this f***ing brilliant take. Um, when you throw a pass, catch the pass. And if the Chiefs don't catch passes, it's hard to get first downs and score points. And everyone's going to act like they reinvented the wheel on this. They're like, you know, I remember, I'm old enough to remember when the Chiefs had an awesome wide receiver. Whatever happened to him? Uh, maybe they should try to get it. Do you think they get him back? That's what everyone's going to say. And I'm here to tell you, that's not the story of last night. And Dusty, if you tell Brew this is my take, I'll never speak to you again. Because Brew doesn't watch this podcast. So he's not going to know unless you tell him, Dusty. And none of you guys tweet to him either. The story of last night. Yes, the Chiefs would have won if they could have caught the ball. Yes, right now, they have a bad receiver group. That's not really deniable. I don't think it's worse than it was last year that they won the Super Bowl with. But last year, maybe Marquez Valdez-Scantling catches that pass. And while I think Rasheed Rice is better than Juju Smith-Schuster, Mahomes seems to trust Juju more than he trusts Rice. Seems like the guy he trusts the most is Justin Watson, the kid from Penn, who made one really good catch but also had a few critical drops. But none of that is the story. And if people can take a deep breath and take a step back, the story from the chief side of things is while yes a win they should have won the game they were in position to win the game they blew a double digit halftime lead they had bad drops it was ugly all of it but the chiefs played a team that not only has the best record in football not only last year had the uh, best record in the NFC, maybe all football. No, I think it was just the, the tied with the Chiefs' best record in football. But a team who is known for having the most physical, most dominating offensive and defensive lines in the NFL. That is their calling card. And the Kansas City Chiefs last night at Arrowhead pushed them around on both sides of the ball. Now, 
They couldn't finish it off, and the Eagles, I'm taking nothing away from them. That is a team that knows how to win football games, that finds ways to win football games, and Jalen Hurts being able to have as bad of a game as he was having and then still making that pass to Devontae Smith that was the biggest play of the game, that's, that is what allows you to become a great quarterback is when even when you're having a bad game that you can make the critical play credit to him and the and I I, I get it people are going to say yeah and Devonte caught it and then Mahomes made an even better play and MVS dropped it I understand that but I watched a football game last night where the Kansas City Chiefs could run the ball all over an Eagles team that no one has been able to run on all year. And I watched a Chiefs team last night that could get to Jalen Hurts in a way no one has gotten to him all year. A team that was so dominant through the first three quarters defensively, the Eagles didn't even have an opportunity to do their brotherly shove play because they were never in third and short. And the one time they were in it, they for some reason did like a shotgun handoff and that got blown up. Oh, no, sorry. No, and then later in the game, they finally were able to do it in the fourth quarter. And I'm not taking anything away from Philadelphia. They earned that win. That was, that is the type of win that if the, the that when the chiefs have won games like that not really that style but where they are thoroughly outplayed and then steal it at the end that's what makes you feel like this is a special team so i'm i'm throwing i think there is I, there's so much confusion in today's media in my opinion on that the nfl is not college football that it is not about style points. That it is not about margin of victory, in, especially when it's two good teams playing or two great teams playing. It's about finding a way to win the football game. And the Eagles, over the last two years, have done that as well as anyone other than the Chiefs, and they just went to Arrowhead and beat the Chiefs. So I give them full credit. But I watched that game, and I said, there were giant segments of the game that it felt like the Chiefs dominated them. Not that made a couple big plays, but methodically on both sides of the ball dominated them. And then here's the, I know everyone today, Demonze is going to talk about the drops and they lead the lead in drops. And the first game of the year, they had a fourth and 24 to, you know what I mean? Keep the game alive. Mahomes throws it perfectly and it gets dropped. Last night, they had a 4th and 25 after a previous drop. He somehow throws it perfectly and gets dropped. I understand that. The reason I am not as focused on that as everyone else is, is with all those drops, do you know why the Chiefs lost that game? Because their three most important people all made critical mistakes. Patrick Mahomes threw a terrible red zone interception. Terrible. It was a bad play. It was an, he wasn't under pressure. He just had a bad play. I believe Patrick Mahomes is not going to duplicate that mistake. Travis Kelsey, the greatest tight end ever, very similarly to the regular season game last year against the Bengals, fumbled the ball when they were trying to go up two scores and took points off the board. And the last person is Andy Reid. Reid didn't make a singular mistake, but the Chiefs haven't scored in the second half the last three weeks. They are right now the number two first-half scoring team in the league, and they're the dead last second-half scoring team in the league. That's halftime adjustments, right? That is the other team making more adjustments at the half than you are. So that's on Andy. So the reason I feel fine... And is if I I cannot sit here and tell you I know with full confidence that these receivers who've been dropping passes all year are going to stop dropping passes. What I can tell you with full confidence is 
I don't think they have to stop dropping passes if those three future first ballot Hall of Famers, some of the best to ever do what they do, clean up their stuff. And I guarantee that's how those guys feel. And yeah, that's holding them to an unfair standard, whatever it is. That's when you are the most talented quarterback ever, the greatest tight end ever, and one of the greatest coaches ever. That's the standard. And so that's so that's where I, I land on that. Hey, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button to get more from the show and make sure to click the bell to get notified every time new content drops. Check out full episodes of What's Right wherever you get your podcasts or just click the link in the description below.